How's it going, you gorgeous bastards? I'm so glad that you decided to swing by to check out some of your comments. Let's dive in. Uh, so, just pulling up the first comments I see here. By Rustin Cole, he says, and thank you for commenting, by the way. Uh, I'm saving my commentary and thoughts for after the sketch. Subscribed. So many reactors could take a lesson from you on that. Love to see you react to their mattress sketch. You got it. I love Killian Geeves. How could you not? They're fantastic. Every time I watch something, it's... I did see one that I, before, um, <laughs> I did see one before I started doing this, so I, you won't see me react to it, but it's, uh, he's on, like, an exercise bike. Oh, my God. I, I would like to just post it, but it's already on the internet. Go find it. Type in Gillian Keeves exercise bike. It's, it's amazing. Let's see. What else we got here? Uh, commenting on the Doug Stanhope, uh, is this anti-Semitic, uh, Jew... <laughs> Jew set is uh oh Rustin Cole again oh thanks again sir uh, damn you saw him live he's a legend huh he's my favorite comedian to go to see live super approachable nice guy he was great he did roast me a little bit I was super excited uh, so you can google this actually in uh, Cedar Rapids Iowa there's a small bar called Penguins and they also do stand up there so you'll have you'll have road comics coming through so I haven't seen all of these people, but you know, you get like Tom Arnold's, uh, professional wrestlers who think they're stand-ups who, who I'll go see because I, I like wrestling and those stories are fun for me. <laughs> um, but Stan Hope came through with a couple of his friends and he did a couple sets in between them and they did like, you know, 20 minutes at the end. But it really was he, the tour, you could tell he was touring with his name to get his friends paid. I loved that. I thought it was amazing. Um, I did sneak a little photo when he came out, and he roasted me and told me to put my phone away. And honestly, it was an honor. But I've never put my, but I've never pulled that again. Also, not the most well-spoken person. Let's see what else we got here. Oh wow, Rustin! Thank you so much. All right, well I can't read all. I can't, this can't just be Rustin Cole's comments. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Oh, here's a comment from Make seven hundred and fifty dollars per day. I, totally legitimate, right? Not a scam at all. She says, uh, things work out best for those who make the best of how things work. John Wooden. Thank you, not a bot. I leave, I'm going to leave you in there, not a bot, because it helps with the algorithm. It's annoying, but I'm going to leave you in there to an extent. <laughs> oh, uh, Joe Brown says, hey, lady, you're in the way. I get out of the picture. <laughs> we changed the format, uh, Joe, but thanks for commenting. What else we got here? Here we go. We got one from uh, Joe. Uh, we got one from Chicago Joe on the uh, Pablo Francisco Ecstasy at the Techno Club. Uh, Chicago Joe here. Drugs got the best of him and he flipped out on stage and fell off the stage. Damn. It's on YouTube. We're going to have to watch that. <laughs> He's making a comeback. Hope you do more. Maybe Tony Baker cat voiceovers. Tony Baker. No, that's Troy Baker. Troy Baker is the guy who does the GTA um, stuff. Uh, Tony Baker cat voiceovers. That's interesting. I'll check that out. Thank you for commenting. Okay. And on the Tom Segura gifts Hitler's teacup video, uh, Zach M writes, a little context to what Bert meant by, oh, I like context. Thank you. A little context to what Bert meant by I'm supposed to destroy it and why this whole thing is great. Smiley face. So according to international law, any Nazi artifacts are supposed to be destroyed or turned over to the proper authorities. You cannot own Nazi artifacts as a private citizen. I know some people who have some. It's pretty messed up. Uh, they didn't, like, seek it out. It was just kind of inherited from people who were in the war, you know? Uh, they should get rid of it, though. It is against financial banking law to use monetary mechanisms, credit card, traceable transfers, accounts to purchase Nazi artifacts. Tom could go to federal prison, which is why Tom used cash. And thirdly, Bert has a European tour coming up. Oh, no. And the U.S. The EU, the EU does not fuck around with stuff like this. I bet they don't. Uh, they could deny Bert from entering the continent, and I'm not even joking. Bert could show up at customs in Europe, and they could literally say, What have you done with the cup? I guarantee you Tom knew all of this, which is what makes this so diabolically hilarious. Those two guys. I'm glad they switched it up from like just buying outrageous things. That was a bit silly. I think the Nazi stuff's a bit far, but it man, it was funny. It was so funny. I, I died laughing. Well, not literally, obviously. On the uh, Would You Trust Leon video, Leon is awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, one of my faves in Curb Your Enthusiasm. He makes Curb Your Enthusiasm, right?
he just makes it. I mean, I love the stuff before him, um, but he just really adds that little extra kick for, for Larry to play off of. All right, here we go. We got um, on the Andrew Scholes uh, part one uh, for Infamous, uh, Sick Jits just replied, fire emoji, fist emoji. You got good taste, pal. Thank you for commenting. On uh, George Carlin Dismantles the Ten Commandments, we've got Johnny Salamone. Love it. More George Carlin, please. He's just, I'm going to have to keep making George Carlin. You guys want him. But it can't just be all George Carlin. I mean, come on. But I love him. Love him to pieces. When, we, when I was in college, I actually worked in the rec center, and we had a, um, like a pot. We would, we, pour, we would pour clay pots, and they would dry, and then we would sell them, and people would paint them. It was, it was a way to make money. But while we were doing it, we would just listen to the same George Carlin album over and over and over and over again. I don't remember which one it was. This is like almost 20 years ago, but at that time, I knew it word for word. Okay, I uh, put up a short by, about Brendan Schwab being super terrible at comedy. Basically, he makes a joke where he says, uh, wouldn't it be great if me and my friends were gay so we could fuck each other and then laughs? Dude, we were making that joke in third grade. Uh, but uh, for Keep keep It Real too. thank you for commenting, not burning you, says, this is the only joke in the special that actually made me laugh. And You know why I think it made you laugh? Because he laughed. He signaled it was time for you to laugh, and then they laughed, and then everybody laughs. It's hacky. I hate it when comedians laugh. You don't see George Carlin up there laughing at his own jokes. You don't see... It is becoming more common now, though. Sometimes you'll see Bert... Bill Burr or Tom Skura do like a little <clears throat> or whatever, but I think they're, that's because they literally find it funny. I don't think that they need to rely on that, but there are some comedians who just hack it up on stage and let you know when it's time to laugh. I don't know if you've ever seen an influencer at a concert. I've seen some videos. It's pretty terrible. Let's see. What else we got? We're going to do a couple more. These are pretty random, so... Oh, uh, I wrote, you're a pig on the <laughs> Killian Keeves sketch for uh, Trump speed dating, and old man... Uh, told me how to spell your correctly so thank you i am dyslexic uh so i i actually do appreciate it when you let me guys know that because i can fix it and it's not quite as humiliating so don't feel bad about letting me know if i misspell something because i really honestly don't always see it oh excuse me okay this is back to the kanye west praises hitler uh boxing prof uh, cool name, uh, says, we are in the end of times, a black guy praising Hitler, someone out crazying Alex Jones. That's the nuttiest part, is that he's out crazying Alex Jones. That's the nuttiest part. The nuttiest part. <sighs> and what's with the damn mask? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I have, like, some mental health issues, and I've had my crazies when I, you know, before I got help and stuff when I was younger, and... I knew some people who got really sick. I never thought, I don't think I've ever seen anybody who felt the need to cover their mask, their face like that. It's like watching somebody in Watchmen. You ever watch that uh, TV show Watchmen? It's fucking crazy. Maybe it's, um, oh, I bet it's like some kind of weird, like, hipster um, commentary on Fauci always wanting us to wear a mask. Something like that. Something stupid. <laughs> uh... Stuart Cookson on the Iwin Reacts, Shane Gillis shines in his Comedy Central special. He just wrote, I agree. Thank you. Thank you for commenting. I agree, too. I, I, that's why, I, yeah, yeah, country music is very great, is very fun that way. Oh, here's one of my favorites that I like to see. Uh, it's on the George Carlin Dismantles the Ten Commandments. It's just, for the algorithm! And you can't pronounce this. It's uh, a one, two, three, four, it's one, two, three, five, eight, one, three, two, one, alafibs. Thanks. What two three five eight one three two one Alif Fibs? Did I do that right? I hope so. Thanks for commenting. The algorithm. Woo! <laughs> but you know what? I think that's a good place to stop, guys. I actually have a, a little uh, party for my son's friends right after school. They're gonna come over. They're gonna paint. It's gonna be a good time, and I'm gonna be exhausted and stressed out. But uh, this was really fun. Thanks. If you guys stuck through it, uh, appreciate you watching my babbling and getting to know me a little bit. Appreciate getting to know you guys in the comments. Um, I'm all, I try to be in there as much as I can. Um, you guys have a great day, all right? Thanks for coming by.